Hey, Crispin Glover, I know it's your show, but you can't talk to me like that. Hey, you. You get your damn hands off me right now. <laughs> Said you had sex what 900 times there's a four different types of female circumcision time to stop hi i'm david spade and i'm the only person in show business working this christmas filling in for greg kinnear on talk soup Coming up, John Wayne rides again, and I'm not talking about the Duke. And sorry, Virginia, Santa is just a fat man in a red suit. But first, Jada is a stripper with standards. That's right, she won't get naked for just anyone. In fact, if you want this table dancing cutie to bear it all, you have to first show her some form of ID. Yes, you got it, the old I'm a Playboy talent scout scam. Believe it or not, actually worked on Jada. Jerry Springer has details. What happened in the photography session that he took pictures, he took two rolls, he videotaped it, which we did not know until later on. Um, he did touch us with some glistening gel. Um, I personally slapped his hand away, told him I could do it myself. He uh, pinched our breasts to make them harder, and joking around with him, I told him I'd do it for a living, I could do it better than he could. And... It just, it was, it, that's where it started, that's where warning bells started to go off, though. It's because he kept trying to touch us, even though he did seem professional. It's a fact of he kept saying, oh, this hair's out of place, I gotta move it. It's just like, you know, it did make us feel uncomfortable. And after the photo sessions, when all of us girls got together, there were too many questions, there were too many warning bells to all of us. Now, this was a, this was a rather regular-looking guy. I'm he was an Anchorage firefighter. And you never bothered to check with Playboy magazine? No, because he showed an official ID card. <laughs> <laughs> she was naughty. You know, I used to go out with Jada, and uh, what hurts Jada hurts me. What did she say about glistening gel? Can you run that one part again? He did touch us with some glistening gel. Um, I personally slapped his hand away, told him I could do it myself. You know, when Christina Applegate hosted Saturday Night Live, she touched me with glistening gel. And I didn't think anything of it at the time, but she said she was a fireman in Anchorage and before showbiz. I don't know. Anyway, on Monday's show, Jerry Springer will help a dream come true for two terminally ill kids. In fact, he'll host a junior wedding ceremony in their honor. Something tells me Cole has told this story a few times before. He appeared on Bertice. It involves a speeding train, a life-threatening accident, and a faithful canine companion named Noble. Relax, animal lovers. Noble survived this incident without a scratch. In fact, for years afterwards, he was merrily fetching his master's slippers. Actually, make that slipper. Then I heard the roar of a train. I turn. My beloved dog, Noble, is right on the railroad track. I give him the emergency come command, and he froze. It was the sound of the train, the vibration of the ground. And then what happened next had the quality of eternity. You hear this in near-death experiences. Time just stopped. I looked into his eyes. There was not a man and a dog. There was a friend and a friend. Mm -hmm. There was a bond that transcends the boundary of species. It heralds the kinship of all life. And I knew what I had to do. And so I jumped in front of the train. And time is now dilated to the point of stillness. I grab him by the chest. I flip him out of the way. Now everything is crystal quiet. Mm -hmm. The train is appearing frozen like a giant mountain about coming, cascading down. And then I push him, I try and tuck and roll. Then time resumes its normal course. Wham! I'm run over by the train, cuts off my leg. Then what happened? I was almost lost consciousness and I would have died. Except my dog, Noble, came over and started licking my face. He kept me conscious, he saved my life. So I just gripped what was left of, left of a bleeding leg. Mm -hmm. And he stayed there with me. Then eventually, after about 20 minutes, um, an ambulance came. And he kept me conscious. I mean, there's nothing subtle about being run over he by a train. You know, until he tells me that dog got in the ambulance and drove him away. 
not impressed because until then he was doing very dog things, licking his face, etc. You know, it's funny, when Christina Applegate hosted, she was licking my severed leg. I didn't think anything of it at the time. She said she... This Monday, we're going to find out who the hell Bertice Berry really is. A little known Bertice fact to tide you over, our Miss Berry was once a college professor. I suppose, in, I suppose introducing this highlight makes me just another of the media vultures circling around the Michael Jackson story. Well, so be it. Wednesday, Larry King spoke with Michael Jackson's attorney, Johnny Cochran. He had this to say about his client's well-publicized press conference. He said he was strip searched by a search warrant. What was that all about? Well, in, in fact, uh, he was searched. I, I wouldn't use the word strip search, but he was searched uh, in a manner that allowed the authorities to film his, uh, his genitals, his buttocks, his entire body. It was outrageous, uh, clearly outrageous. It was dehumanizing, it was humiliating to him. But as he said today, he withstood that. And none of us would want to go through that, Larry, but and he did it. They did that because he felt it was necessary. And did they do that, Johnny, because a young boy had apparently described markings on the body that they had a chance? Isn't that, what else could they do? It's difficult. No, I think there's a lot of things that could have been done. Uh, Michael Jackson has acknowledged that he has vitiligo. And I think anyone who knows him is aware of the fact that he's had this condition. It's been very painful for him. So why would they have to go through this uh, to establish that? It seems to me that there certainly would be a more humane, uh, appropriate way of going about this. And we were very concerned about it. It was a terrible experience for him. He, he describes it as the worst time of his life, and, and I think he can appreciate that. Were you, were you, either of you, present? We were both present uh, in close proximity because we had a lot of concern for our concern. We were concerned. We were outraged. We were upset by this. I was outraged. I was upset because I thought this was on pay-per-view. The strip <laughs> search, I mean. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> On Monday's show, Larry's guest will be former basketball great and current author, Michael Jordan. Stay huddled close to those sets when we return. It's all the genitalia mutilation you can shake a stick at. Can you have an orgasm? Um, um, probably, yeah. I think, yeah, I can have an orgasm. Have you had one since your surgery? I can do for my family. We're a team. Uh, what's the soup du jour? Talk soup? Mmm, -hmm. no thanks. Huh. Last time I had it, I got sick. <laughs> <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> Sounded like a joke. I don't know if it really was. Okay, I'm David Spade. When the talk soup staff asked me to fill in for Greg Kinnear, I had one stipulation. I said, I want to show a genitalia mutilation clip. But you know what? I've changed my mind. I think I'd rather show you a guy who can spin a tire and luggage with his bare fingers. It comes courtesy of The Tonight Show. Roll it. Now, can you do radials? This is not a radial. Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, um, I can't get a job balancing now, tires, though. I'm not, see, now, there's no center here, so how do you... Where do you balance? Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of your favorite things to spin? What are they? Uh, let me show you. Suitcase? Yeah. Uh, well, you said suitcases. Now, this would be great at the airport. Man, you give the guy five bucks. <laughs> Just don't let me handle your luggage. You know, that guy opened for me at the Red Onion in Redondo. <laughs> that was Chad Lowe. He's in the Guinness Book of World Records for spinning a hubcap for 22 hours. All right. And no one's going to beat it. Monday, my Saturday Night Live colleague, Phil Hartman, will grace the Tonight Show with his presence. Yes. <sighs> well, I've changed my mind again. I will show you a genitalia mutilation highlight. The show is genitalia <laughs> mutilation heavy. In fact, this is uh, probably 1993's most celebrated genitalia mutilation story. Ever since his wife, Lorena, severed his penis, John Wayne Bobbitt has been keeping a high profile. Perhaps not as high as he'd like. 
But the doctors are working on that. Jenny Jones spoke to Bobbitt about his recovery. That's got to be tough because you were very sexually active. You said you had sex, what, 900 times with Lorena? Well, I can't have sex now anyway, so, no, nothing I can do. Do you but, miss you know, it? Do you miss it? Do I miss having sex? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. Yeah, I do. Can you have an orgasm? Um, um, probably, yeah. I think, yeah, I can have an orgasm. Have you had one since your surgery? Oh, uh, yeah, I did. You did? Huh? You did? You, no, I can't hear you without a mic. Please don't talk. Huh? You did have one since your surgery? Well, my doctor did some tests and they found that, yeah, you know, like I can have orgasms. So is it, uh, when, you, when you have it, is it enjoyable for you or is it different? Well, um, if, you know, uh, I didn't feel it, you know, really. You know. Because the sensation's not back yet. Right. Plus you got four or five doctors standing there staring at you. <laughs> Would you be now emotionally, physically, everything? Where would you be if they had not found it and reattached it? I don't know. I'd be real depressed. Ugh. You see that lady snap? You see Jenny snap on that girl that yelled something in the middle? Jenny's losing it. Oh, well, anyway, I'd be depressed too. That was part two of Jenny's extended John Wayne Bobbitt interview. Later in the show, a woman on the street had this insightful comment to add. Well, I heard that he would take her back, and I think that is very crazy because I would never take somebody back that cut off my penis if I had one. On this Monday's show, Jenny will meet a mom and a dad who hired a stripper to perform at their 12-year-old son's birthday party, and they wound up in jail. From England, the country that brought you David Bowie and Boy George and the world's first cross-dressing children's story. Mrs. Doubtfire comes Dame Edna. In the UK, she's been a talk show sensation for years. Now she's bringing her unique blend of wit and sexual ambiguity to these shores. Joan Rivers spoke to her on Wednesday's show. Who have you liked the best? Who are some of your favorites? Well, Charlton Heston is a very, very great favorite of mine because he doesn't mind doing a bit of housework as well. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> And I always adored him when I was a young woman, a younger woman than I am now. And uh, I loved him and that chariot of his, you know. In a way, I identified with that chariot. And I thought, oh, in Ben-Hur, and I thought, oh, I'd love to be ridden by Charles and Henry. I did. I mean that, please. I mean that in a tasteful way. I do. <laughs> And he comes to my home and he, he slips into a little frilly apron at the drop of a hat. He does, and his wife is adorable and doesn't mind. Who was that, Mrs. Doubtflamer? Earlier in the show, Dame gave Joan a closer look at that stunning gown she was wearing. Look, see these little eyes, cameras, can you see? Look. <laughs> Hmm. I have no joke for that. You've stumped the panel. <laughs> On Monday's show, it's your chance to be Joan for a day. <laughs> oh, please. Joan will pick a home viewer to host your show. Cross your legs and hold on a few minutes longer when we return. A polygamist says, I do, I do. I do, I do, I do. I'm naughty. And Dennis the Menace steps up to the pulpit when we return. Four. Hi there, welcome back. Uh, I'm not Greg Kinnear, I'm David Spade filling in. I work on Saturday Night Live where I do a thing called the Hollywood Minute, where I do jokes like, I uh, just saw the new Calvin Klein Obsession ad with Kate Moss on TV. I thought it was a preview for Schindler's List. <laughs> Back to business. Michael swears his parents don't lock him in the broom closet and force him <laughs> to studying the scriptures. Nay, brothers and sisters, this young evangelist gets his inspiration straight from God Almighty. 
And when he's not basking in the light of our Lord's divine grace, he's making talk show appearances like this one on the ever-popular Vicki Lawrence show. <laughs> it just comes to me. It does? That's right. So you don't plan what you're going to speak about? No. It's just God that gives me the right words to say. And Like, could you just jump up here and start preaching, everybody? Right? You could? Right. Would you? Really? Mm -hmm. Well, go for it. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. And Sherat, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, I would not bow down and worship the golden image which you had set up. Because they knew they were serving a true God. They were serving a I am, a Lord of Lords, a King of Kings, the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valleys, the Bright and Morning Star. They were serving a true God that would heal them, that would deliver them and set them free. And I know God will heal you. God will take you out of your fiery furnace. God will take you out of your tribulation. God will take you out of your sorrow. <laughs> Who, who's going to take us out of sorrow? I didn't get the guy's name. All right. I, uh, I'm going to play that kid on Science Live probably next week. <laughs> Michael says he wants to be a televangelist when he grows up. Although he's just 11, he claims he already has plenty of girlfriends, even though they can't do it. <laughs> Believe it or not, Vicki will be speaking with some incredible, outrageous, amazing people on Monday's show. Shit's up. Teresa's husband really believes in the institution of marriage. Really? Really? Hmm, you'll see why I'm joking. <laughs> of course, these days he's learning about another institution called prison. <laughs> Look into it. You got it. This guy was married to five different women at the same time. Maury Povich was naturally curious how he got away with it. Teresa had been married for two years when her husband got a very interesting phone call. Who was on the phone, Teresa? Kim, his uh, fifth wife. I picked Say that up again. His fifth wife. Fifth? Fifth. You were married to this guy? Yes, I was. And you thought that he had been, what, married before and divorced? Well, I knew of one prior marriage, um, Maury, but that's it. And I picked up the phone, and I answered it my normal way, and she says, is Jim there? Well, inquire to, I'm very inquired. I inquire a lot. <laughs> the password is inquisitive. I didn't learn that word till just two weeks ago myself. Jim is currently serving a 364-day sentence. Oh, yeah, one day shy of a year. Teresa says she never wants to see him again. Hmm. Whatever. Monday, Maury learns about an obsessive romance that led to attempted murder. Remember that part in the film Tommy when Anne margaret is fondling a giant sofa cushion while a TV set sprays baked beans all over her? I do. Well, compared to this next highlight from Good Morning America, that scene will make sense. I'm going to get you for this. I thought you were great. <laughs> I was really going to get you for this. Have you seen that? Siegel. Have you seen that since, since you did that? No, I haven't. I, do you like You know what? I never watched what I thought you knew. Uh, Out of no. the 42 films I've done, I've seen them one time in a screening room, and that's it. Because when I do something, it's over. It's over. Last question. The movie Grumpy Old Men. When people leave the theater, what do you want them to take with them? I want them to take with them this wonderful, warm glow of having spent a really wonderful time with all these characters. Having a lot of laughter, maybe a little tug at the heartstrings, maybe a little tear, but it's a wonderful film you can take your children to. How bizarre. <laughs> hmm. She's still a very pretty woman. Uh, this morning on, oh, this Monday on Good Morning America, Rosie O'Donnell talks about her role in an upcoming Broadway revival of Grease. And there's one more talk soup hot light slithering up your pant leg at the head. Put this in your stocking and stuff it. Welcome back to Talk Soup. Uh, you know, 
You know, usually we have a Tom and Roseanne Arnold clip on Talk Soup, and we didn't get one this show. It's unfortunate because I like to watch them on TV. It's like watching Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> Tom's like Beavis. Everything Rosie says. <laughs> Good one, Rosie. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell him that one, Rosie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. We're wrapping it up. This next guest from the Richard Bay Show is dreaming of seeing Santa portrayed as a fat white man, and he's ready to tell his two-year-old daughter there simply is no Kris Kringle. To help him see the air of his ways, Richard Bay performed this inspired bit of method acting. You have a two-year-old daughter together, and uh, you want to tell this daughter that there is no Santa Claus? That's right. What, how, would you, how are you going to tell her? Let's say I'm your daughter. Mm -hmm. I go, oh, daddy, daddy, it's Christmas time. Yes, Daddy. I'm not going to sit on your lap. Listen, you don't get more I that way, Rich. Okay. I that way. Daddy, Daddy, it's Christmas time. Santa, I, I saw him in the department store. He's going to come down the chimneys. Uh, Daddy, what? The, the roof is locked. Ain't Santa Claus coming down no damn chimney. <laughs> I'm Santa Claus. Mommy lied, and he lied before that because Santa Claus is me. Not the white Santa Claus in the mall you pay and cried when we was years old. I'm going to snatch him by his neck. I'm Santa Claus. And the whole whole home. Now, oh <laughs> you know, about 10 years ago, I used to babysit Richard Bay, and he always cried like that. Is that a joke? I'm running out of steam here. <sighs> Richard Craig Kinnear needs to come back and save. On Richard's show Monday, sisterly hate reaches a new low. They admit they're related to each other, but that's all they agree on. It's been life-enhancing experience. Thanks for joining me. I'm David Spade reminding you to tune in for more Talk Soup tomorrow night at 9 Eastern and 8 Pacific. We'll see you next time. Coming up next on E! News Daily, Bianca and all the news gang and all the news that we could gather in time for the broadcast. They're still running down the halls. Whoop, don't trip there, Bianca.